There's been a lot of hype in the news media lately regarding Ada, the 47 million year old intermediate monkey lemur that was revealed after years of secretive research. Some have hailed her as the missing link between humans and apes. But obviously since Ida wasn't an ape herself, nor a hominy, nor even a monkey, then she could hardly have been a link between humans and apes. Sky News, who reported all this, has revealed themselves as tabloid journalists. Trumpeting this find as the ape wonder of the world? Why that one, and not any of the other links in that sequence that were found before her? But sadly, the media isn't entirely to blame. Some of this has been done by scientists. One of the researchers involved actually predicted that once their results were published, that the news would be as profound as an asteroid hitting the Earth. <laughs> this is the moment he cast eyes on the anthropological equivalent of the Holy Grail. Oh. <laughs> the anthropological equivalent to the Holy Grail? The Holy Grail. I am personally very upset at any situation wherein I am forced to agree with anything said by anyone so insanely biased, deliberately dishonest, and willfully ignorant as PCS2. But for the first and hopefully only time in his YouTube career, the new Sith Lord has a valid criticism. This find wasn't presented in any respectable scientific fashion, at least not once the news media got a hold of it. BAM! Media Blitz! Is this how science is done? Is it? It is highly inappropriate sensationalism, and the way it's described is very misleading to anybody that doesn't understand taxonomy very well, and almost nobody does. Now people can say, okay, you say we're, we're, we're primates, like monkeys and apes, uh, and that we came from very uh, simple, generalized uh, mammals. Show us the link. The link, they would have said, until now, is missing. Uh, well, it is no longer missing. No, sir. With all due respect, Mr. Attenborough, the fossil you're talking about that was discovered 26 years ago is not a link between humans and apes. That link was found 35 years ago. Ida is a link between apes and other monkeys like us and another primate subset known as prosimians. The way you describe it could be interpreted as though humans and chimpanzees had each evolved through a long series of independent yet somehow parallel identical stages but with no genetic bonds between us for the last 47 million years. Obviously, that cannot have been the case. Part of the misperception here might be the conflict between Linnaean and phylogenetic concepts. It's a common problem when trying to comprehend evolution. Here's a cladistic depiction to help illustrate my point. First, we have the various species of men, Neanderthals, hobbits, sapiens, erectus, and so on. All these are human, including Homo habilis, which is the basal root species, blurring the imagined lines between Australopiths and Homoines. This group flowers out of the same parent pool that also produced chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, orangutans, and many others that are now all gone. There are more extinct ape species than extant ones. The link between humans and apes is the basal form at the root of the human family, which arguably could include Australopiths, all of them, Afarensis, Africansis, Robustus, Boise, the lot. This larger grouping could also be interpreted as the tribe Hominini. Although hotly debated only by those who dogmatically reject evidence not in scripture, Australopithecus afarensis, discovered in 1974, has the exact mosaic of characters in the appropriate proportions to precisely match all the criteria required of the link between humans and all other apes. The root of the Hominin tribe appears to be Dryopithecus fontana, another transitional species. That having been established, we move to the next parent group. The great apes, or hominids, and today's lesser apes both emerge from a larger all-ape collective called hominoidea. This flowered out of a clan of caterhenes, also known as old world monkeys. The basal link here is what experts call an ape-like monkey, Aegyptopithecus, leading to a monkey-like ape called proconsul. Both apes and circopithecid monkeys have emerged from an extinct elder sister group called Propliopithecoidea, named after the root of that troop and the next level link. Both Old World and New World monkeys obviously derive from the same source, within a still larger clade called Anthropoidea, also known as Simiforms. Either way, it's a bunch of monkeys. The root of this group is another once but no longer missing link named Apidian, the most primitive true monkey known. Monkeys and our cousins the Tarsiers both stem from yet another common clade called Haplerheni. 
which includes everything mentioned so far. The basal root of this group, the transition between monkeys and tarsiers and basal to bow, is Eosimius, the dawn monkey, another link that was still missing until 1994. Now, as some of you may remember, and you can still go back to look it up, the first time I presented this cladogram just a couple months ago, every other branch of the primate family tree was filled in by various no longer missing links, all except one a species with characters intermediate between haplorhines, the dry-nosed primates like ourselves, and strepsorhini, being lemurs and lorises and other wet-nosed primates. Now, when I made that cladogram, I wanted to fill in that last gap, but of course I had obviously had to leave it blank because I had nothing to fill it with, until now. That slot belongs to Darwinius Massillae, the fossil known as Ida. She is a big deal, but not in the way the media would have us believe. It's not like she is the missing link. In a way, she is the last significant link we needed to find. She could rewrite science. She could confirm Darwinian theory and debunk creationism. She could also question religion itself. Bullshit. As I've already shown, Ida fits exactly where science had previously predicted, and Darwinian theory has already been and still is being confirmed hundreds of times over starting several decades ago. But religious apologetics is in the business of automatically rationalizing away, without consideration, anything it doesn't want to accept. So scientific evidence is never going to matter to any of these people. Now, some people would probably consider me a militant atheist because I believe that all religious beliefs by nature of faith are fundamentally dishonest and deserving of severe criticism. So if evolution really were the way to disprove all of that, believe me, I'd be the first one to say so. But the fact of the matter is that uh, scientific evidence only disproves the various myths of miraculous creation. It cannot challenge religion itself because neither Christianity nor Islam nor Sikh nor Hindu or any other faith are dependent on a necessarily inexplicable and thus magical origin. This is also why we have so many evolutionary biologists in various denominations of each of these sects who promote a divinely guided evolution as part of the creative process. When I still believed in God, I saw evolution as part of an unfolding plan indicative of a higher power with deliberate intent. So Ida cannot have the kind of impact advertised. It might even have a counter effect because if you hype anything too much, you're going to be disappointed by whatever it is. I suspect many scientists are composing similar arguments right now, arguing in effect that despite the, the genuine significance this fossil actually does have, it's been, it's been tainted by an embarrassing display of autofillating fanfare. And just when Ida hit the news, other sources announced profound breakthroughs in abiogenesis research. For example, after 45 years of repeated failure, we finally seen ribonucleotides synthesize automatically under the right natural conditions expected of a prebiotic Earth. That, to me, is huge much more newsworthy than any, you know, than just another link in an already sufficiently complete evolutionary chain.